Om Shanti. Thank you very much, Mr. Aisigul. It's really lovely to be with the family. And I am also Turkish. very happy to see you again. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Indeed, indeed. So, <clears throat> uh, yes, I, I chose this topic because I've noticed something really about myself that it seems a lot of focus, you know, usually give a lot of focus on giving, on learning how to give, being a bestower, master bestower, everything. But what about receiving? I often find in myself and, and sometimes also when I see others that there's a lot more difficulty in being able to receive well. No. And I think that there are four things here, actually. With giving, there is offering. So there's offering and giving. And then with receiving, there's receiving and taking. No. And so I was thinking how in the golden age, actually this, this thing of giving and receiving is one of the actions that has continued throughout the cycle for us as souls, or as human beings. And in the golden age, of course, the, the giving is really like an offering. You know? So where we offer naturally, we receive with grace, with royalty, you know, with the sense of abundance, with no desire, no sense of obligation. But there's this very natural overflowing sharing. You know? And so we're not all the same. So therefore, there is a giving and receiving of different qualities and talents. And, you know, you can just imagine the exchange of gifts and just exchange of really the, the beautiful virtues of the soul, which are manifest as deities. You know? And then, of course, when we come further down, um, I think what happens in the Copper Age is that our giving and receiving becomes like a bargaining. So it becomes bargaining also with God, you know, that we we say, well, I'll do this difficult tapasya and penance and you give me this, you know. Um, and of course, the same thing with our interactions with each other is that I think the, um, the natural sense of abundance and where there's not the limited supply that goes away and we begin to be fearful of not having enough or not receiving enough and you know and we know the story of course and then I think in the iron age what happens is that rather than giving you know and offering and receiving we we learn how to demand and and take and 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 then on the other side we also learn how to beg um, but of course in different ways and and I think that's why when it comes up in the Murli when Baba says it's better to die than to ask I would translate that it's better to die than to beg so so the the asking is one thing, but the begging and and imploring, you know, requesting, uh, but requesting in a way of, of more like um, like someone who who has no right. You know. uh, so that's how we ended up in the Iron Age. You know. And then of course Baba comes and and I feel needs to teach us again how to give and offer, and how to receive as well. You know, learning how to receive, I think, is a very big thing. And that's why I think, again, in order to make it like an art that it is in the golden age, um, we need to learn that now 
of course, in the confluence age. And so then the question is, well, okay, so what have I given to Baba? What have I received from Baba? You know, and I can say, well, I've given my life to Baba. And then I say, well, actually, I've received my life from Baba because without Baba, I don't know what my life would have been. You know? And so what, of course, within that, uh, we can each make a list for ourselves. I think, what, what have I received from Baba? And, and I guess the, you know, the, the things that come to mind, the knowledge, power, teachings, trust, companionship, care, sustenance, you know, self-respect. These are some of the, shall we say, main things that I can identify in terms of life. You know? um, and then when I think of the family, that what have I given to the family? What have I received from the family? Ongoing, so it's not over yet. And um, there are many things, and I would put them in both categories. So giving and receiving. So whether it's cooperation, receiving power through the gathering. You know, how often have you felt that, gosh, it's difficult to connect with Baba. Then you go into a gathering and it's like... Um, you know, like someone puts their hand out to you and pulls you up, you know. Someone gives you drishti and you feel just completely centered again, you know. And so that's what we give and receive to each other as the Brahmin family. Uh, good wishes is a big thing that we give and receive. And I think the power of our good wishes um, I think that becomes visible when they're not there. You know? <laughs> when we, we don't have good wishes for someone or we don't receive good wishes for some, from someone, that's when we notice it. And that's when we can, I think, really recognize the power of just how much um, help we get from each other's good wishes. You know? And then another thing I think we receive from each other uh, is the polishing of the diamond. <laughs> so you need a diamond to polish a diamond. And so that's what we do with each other, really, knowingly or unknowingly. <laughs> and, um, and I think this is the cooperation. Because Baba said we don't give donations to our brothers and sisters, our Brahmins, but we give cooperation. And so we'll look at that a little bit more deeply, this thing of the polishing of the diamond, <laughs> a little bit further on. Um, but I was just thinking how important it is, even this aspect of giving, that when I learn how to give, that's when I really... Um, it brings meaning into my life. And when I learn how to receive, then I feel truly fulfilled. You know, it's otherwise the bucket, the container that I'm putting what I'm receiving in. If I'm not receiving it correctly, then it's probably got holes in it somewhere. You know, there's some leakage somewhere. And so learning how to receive uh, is what will fulfill me and learning how to give is what really brings meaning to my life. And what I find is that um, when I uh, find, when something is really fulfilling for me, so whether it's um, understanding an aspect of knowledge or whether it's a certain practice in yoga or whether it's a certain understanding you know, a certain way of being, a certain dharna, um, an attitude, w w or really an activity, whatever it might be, if I find it's truly fulfilling, then it's probably something that is worth offering to others as well. 
Um, because what we're offering is not just the information or sharing an experience, but it's the energy that we have received that has done something to us inside, transformed something. And when people see transformation, that's a, a very big inspiration. You know? And in fact, I wanted to just at this point, if I may read a, a little quote from one of um, from Daddy's new book. I think maybe some of you have seen it. You know, this we received this book um, just this year, earlier this year. And I was just happened to be reading a page and I already knew about this topic. So I suppose I was a little bit more aware of things connected with this. Um, and, and so Daddy is talking about transforming weaknesses. So seeing your change, you know, so connected with what I was mentioning earlier, seeing your change there will be love generated in the hearts of people and the vibrations of that love will reach you. It will subtly give you strength. So when I've managed to change some weakness, love is generated in the hearts of other people. The vibrations of that love will reach you. It will subtly give you strength. This is what I experience that the love you all have for me actually gives me strength. This is Daddy Janki telling us. Blessings are another thing. Strength is another thing. Sometimes you are given love by everyone, but it is because they feel the need to give you love. Not because they want to, or not because it comes from deep within their hearts. So however, through that actual deep inner change, changing some weakness, then the love that we receive from other people is not just to kind of satisfy us superficially, but it comes from the heart. You know? And so I was thinking how um, often um, and I'm sure it must be the same for for all of you, really, or a lot of you, is that there's that sense inside that I have received so much and so much that I want to offer that to others. And so when there is that ability to receive, there is that sense of gratitude. And it's very interesting because Baba says that giving is receiving. <laughs> and so in a certain sense, we can't actually separate the two, these two things, when they are truly giving and truly receiving. And, and so actually it's, you know, it's interesting when, um, when we used to go and see Dadi Janki or when she was giving a class, um, or when she was giving her time and energy and attention, I certainly never had that sense that she wanted something back. You know, if she wanted anything back, it was for me to be happy, for me to be strong. You know, that was all she wanted back, but certainly nothing for herself. And so she was sharing what she had received from Baba. And she was often really grateful and highly appreciative of the opportunity to share what she was accumulating each day. And so our listening to her being present um, as we received these jewels, as, she, as we received what she was sharing, was a kind of giving to her. You know? So it was our way of giving really, but we were receiving, and yet at the same time, we were also giving. She was receiving. You know? And so this is the very beautiful, confluenceated giving and receiving that we that is preparing us for the golden age. You know? And in fact, I, I came across this very beautiful poem 
So it's not a, a, a BK poem. And I apologize already to the translators because <laughs> it may not be easy for you to um, to translate it. I will put it in the in the chat so that maybe um, you know at least you can follow it that way. Let me see if I can. Mm, here we go. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so so this is a this is a poem by someone called Ruth Bebe Meyer. And uh, this is something that's quoted in, you know, in, a, in one of the books called Nonviolent Communication, which I'm sure some of you are familiar with. But it's, it's called Given To. And I think that this is referring to something um, of human relationships in the golden age. You know? So I never feel more given to than when you take from me. When you understand the joy I feel giving to you. And you know my giving isn't done to put you in my debt. But because I want to live the love I feel for you. To receive with grace may be the greatest giving there's no way I can separate the two. When you give to me, I give you my receiving. When you take from me, I feel so given to. So this is the, um, I think, one of the <clears throat> very beautiful ways that we live um, and I would certainly like to be able to learn how to have that ability to offer without the sense of expectations and demands and so on. And so that's really my next uh, question, shall we say, or aspect to look at is what happens when for us as work in progress, as students on the path, what happens when things are not that smooth and balanced as we hope in terms of giving and receiving? When we get a bit confused about what we are giving and what we have received and from whom have we received it, to whom do we have to give it? No. Um, and so this is the, the question, really, um, because I think what happens is that when we feel we haven't received what we are due, then maybe there is bitterness or resentment or that sense of injustice. No. Um, when I feel, you know, that I should have received something, but I haven't, then there's that sense of emptiness. There's a gap inside. Our heart becomes small. Um, and so I think this is why it's really useful to, um, to, to remember everything that we know, of course, but to remember these things at that time of need so that we don't get into that condition already. You know? um, and I was thinking that, you know, when, you know, Baba tells us about the, the three dots, you know, when, if you think of a triangle, so he's at the top and then there's me and then there's everyone else on the other side, on the base of the triangle. And so when, when I remember that um, what I'm offering to someone is what I received from Baba, you know, or what I am receiving from someone, you know, I offer to Baba. So in a certain sense, Baba needs to be in the equation for everything to be balanced and stable. 
because this is the thing that this kind of a triangle you know, is the most stable triangle is when the base is broad and there's the center at the top you know? and so when i receive something from someone i offer it to baba when i receive from baba i offer it to others you know? and so in this way we keep our hearts clean as well yeah. i remember um, one time i was in madhuban and i had gone you know the whole group had gone to baba's rock and um, and i was sitting you know quite close to the top uh, of baba's rock and the brother who was there might have been atam prakash bhai or, or someone gave me the bag of tholi you know often they have the bag of tholi to distribute so so i started to distribute the tholi and and i remember noticing just the 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 drishti of people was filled with so much love and so much gratitude as i was giving this piece of tholi and i suddenly realized that you know this love and gratitude is for baba no and i'm an instrument and i have to be careful with it that i don't think that they are giving it to me you know and so it doesn't mean that i put myself down or i put myself out of the picture no i'm there i'm baba's hands but this love this very um very pure very deep bhavna is actually towards baba and so that was something that really you know in in the clear air of madhuban these kind of realizations can come quite easily you know <laughs> and so i was lucky and i really enjoyed that and it was something that left that i remember a lot is um it is this thing of when i'm offering something and this is where the difference between giving and offering for me is when i'm offering something then in the receiving my heart is already fulfilled because i've received from baba so i'm now offering that um whether someone takes it or leaves it or throws it on the ground or smashes it you know in a sense that's their problem but when i'm giving um with the sense i am giving then i follow where is it going what's happening to what i've given you know um and i think sometimes this thing of using things in a worthwhile way i think we can sometimes misunderstand that you know because when i say okay well i've given it but it should be used properly i think that we might be misunderstanding what baba's meaning by using things in a worthwhile way which is what i have received you know that's what i need to use what remains with me but what i've given is out of my hands and so we need to let it out of our hands and not hold on to it and i think that's where sometimes the issues can come up of i and mine in the giving well i gave so much and so you know <laughs> um so that's that can be a bit of an obstacle i think sometimes you know so just to be aware of it i think it's part of our journey we need to learn how to let that go it's not going to go just like that so i think the first thing is to notice it to observe it um and then the other thing is that um we might be a little bit afraid of receiving um maybe someone you know tells us our virtues tells us how well we did how good we are you know um of course there's also the side of the criticism but that's another thing you know 
but let's say someone you know gives us a lot of appreciation just from the heart not superficially but really from the heart and and it's it's really gratifying and you really feel they mean it you know um i know for myself that many years ago i could not take that even though i really wanted it i really wanted people to tell me that i'm okay but when they actually did tell me i was very afraid to take it because i thought this is just going to build my ego and it's going to go to my head and um and it was as if i was taking something that didn't belong to me and over the years i've kind of worked with that and i've come further shall we say towards an understanding that i can receive it and i can receive it with grace you know uh like something precious that someone is giving and then i hand that to baba you know and i feel the gratitude that this is yes this is what baba has made me and so the focus is on baba because otherwise what can happen and i notice this with myself is that my focus stays on the person who gave me that gift because it really is a gift when there is some appreciation from the heart true pure appreciation it's very precious and we need to receive it i think um but then offer it to baba you know just like we might offer some gift that someone gave us you know maybe some friend or relative gave you a, a beautiful gift and it's it's always worthwhile offering that to baba if you're going to use it you know because otherwise of course what happens is that we remember them it's natural and so it's the same thing for love appreciation care and so on um and then of course there's the aspect of of um, criticism you know can i receive criticism without it turning into um a wound inside or without it going in in such a way that i am left with an infection you know um to be able to take criticism and turn it into something that is useful of course this is what baba suggests for us to do you know this is his directions for us is to learn how to receive that and and it's certainly something that i have not found very easy but it's um little by little the more i have acknowledged and noticed and taken into consideration my own weaknesses and my own darkness and shadow you know the part of the sanskars of the iron age the more i have um accepted them the more i'm able to take the criticism that someone might have towards me you know um because as babas often told us that we are the same ones that go through the full cycle you know and it's incredible to think like today he was saying well it's his magic you know or the other day that actually he makes you know someone who has really just no energy no love no power into someone who is filled with that and so this is the the incredible thing that to be able to see ourselves wholly fully um and so this is something that i've found interesting and and something to learn to accept myself 360 degrees of the cycle and in a certain sense um to not identify myself even as a brahmin you know which might sound strange but my identity is no more a brahmin than it is a deity 
then it is a warrior, a merchant, or a shudra, an angel, a brahmin, deity. Am I more one than the other? No. Actually, they're all parts that I have. And so I know that my true identity is the eternal soul, the child of God. And so even as a Brahmin, if I get criticism or something that I feel so deeply rooted in this moment, actually I can see that I don't even need to be attached to that. Um, and the thing with criticism is that when I take criticism in a sense, rather than receiving it, <laughs> you see what I mean? Um, it is going to make me fluctuate. Whereas when I receive it, it's like receiving is an active process yeah. where I'm taking the initiative. I'm receiving it. And so I receive it in the way that is going to be constructive for me. Um, and so, um, yes, yeah, so, so really what, um, from all of this, in terms of giving and receiving, I think there are some other aspects that can be obstacles uh, that will, in the end, actually, they're not really even obstacles. All they're doing is polishing the diamond, <laughs> which is the cooperation we do give to each other, even though we may not thank each other for that. But actually, it's the cooperation that we give each other. And so anyway, one of the things that certainly comes in the way of enjoying giving and receiving is when there are expectations. So whether it's um, expectations rather than understanding that I'm an instrument, uh, receiving gratefully, gracefully and gratefully as well, um, that's when I begin to have these desires, you know, like was in the, the blessing this morning, which was uh, very beautiful and um, very, very in tune, I think, really, with our topic today is that when Baba was speaking about giving our ideas, you know, and sometimes our ideas are something that we we like a lot, and, and I like my idea. And it's something that is very precious. And so I offer that. So I could also be quiet. You know, I could also not say anything. But I decided to offer it. Now, is it offering or is it, um, you know, in a sense, giving with that sense that, my idea should be used, my idea should be taken into consideration. And that's where the desire comes in. So it's very strange, very paradoxical, that although I'm giving, it's turned into a desire. It looks like I'm giving, but actually it's taking. And so Baba's just bringing our attention to avoid the expectations that can come up in that way, which then, of course, lead to irritation. And, you know, I'm sure we've all experienced that now and again, or often maybe. <laughs> and so that's a, a very good sign to check and say, have I put strings on something that I'm offering? Or is it a free um, passing on of what I've received? And so even that way, the idea, I can say, well, actually, I feel this is something that Baba just dropped into my intellect. So I don't say that, but I can feel that, that Baba's offered that to me. And so I'm just offering it and then letting it go. And of course, this is something that takes a lot of uh, humility to be able to do that. And, and that... I think is really 
such an inspiration. No. I know for me that when I see someone who has humility and yet is has so much greatness, that is one of the biggest inspirations, really. Uh, in their dharna. Um, one thing is that, you know, when, basically when I, um, when I have something that I want to offer to the world, you know, then another question that comes up is that subtly, am I drawing attention to myself or am I drawing attention to the message that I want to give? No. And there was this very beautiful description of, um, I can't remember where I saw it, where I read it or saw it. But if you think about it, there are these two um, artists, you know, both of them like, like actors. So the, the act is that they pick something up from the ground and they're sitting down and they pick it up and they put it up and saying, this is the moon. You know? um, the second one does the same thing. This is the moon. You know? And for one of the actors, they say, gosh, isn't, that, isn't he or she such a good actor? And for the second one, they say, gosh, that moon was so beautiful. Mm -hmm. And so the attention was on the moon, not on the actor. Mm -hmm. And so it's really the question for me to check what is my intention when I put myself in the position of giving? Mm -hmm which could be in any kind of situation, which, I mean, in other words, I suppose what we call service, really, is maybe another synonym for giving. So it's a, it's a question to check and see what is my intention. Um, and even if I realize that my intention is something that is not in line with my true nature, with really what is important to me, then I can change that because I've noticed it. So I have the opportunity to change that even before doing what I was going to do. And so that in itself, I think, is part of our process of transformation, is when we notice something, we check and we change. And that is something we can change. We can change our intention. You know, if my intention was to um, prove that I'm right, for example, I may say, well, actually, my intention is to offer um, what Baba has given to me. You know? And so, of course, the energy with which I will then say or do something will be so completely different. And so I think that's something that can help us to check what am I giving, what am I receiving, um, from whom, and what do I do with that? What do I do with what I've received? Um, I think that one of the things um, when we are giving, but then it turns into a desire. Um, actually, what's happening is that um, we are turning this receiving into a begging. You know, so so there are these words that we can change and um, re-understand. So rather than asking. Rather than begging, it's asking or requesting. Mm -hmm. Because there's also that, that if the help that I need is not forthcoming, am I able to ask for help? Mm -hmm. Am I able to request that? And that's again where I need to check my intention. And if the help is refused, 
that is when I will know whether my request was a request, loving and detached, or whether it was a demand and an expectation. So what um, I was thinking that when we receive help, you know, what can we do with that? Because maybe there are times <clears throat> that we that we need help, you know, from others, from anyone, from the family, from anyone. So what can we do in that moment? You know? um, and I think that what we can do, what I can do, is give in return the gratitude that I feel towards that soul, towards Baba, the love and the blessings that I feel for the soul who has been an instrument to give me that help. You know? And so to see them as an instrument, whether they see themselves as an instrument or not. But can I see them as an instrument for Baba? And, um, and I can also have the humility to realize that as we are a family of God and we do need to support one another because of our love for Baba. So it may be that I don't have that much love for someone or there has been hurt and difficulty within the relationship. But because I love Baba, I'm willing to offer with a clean heart the help that I can for that soul. And so when I do that or when I receive that, then I think we don't need to be afraid of receiving. The difficulty comes as if we demand. And of course, when someone demands something, then even though you might give it, you don't give it with the heart. And so the value of it goes right down. And so anyway, these are just a few thoughts that reflections, I think, Maybe there's more questions about it, but, um, you know, it's an interesting subject. And I really think in conclusion, as, as Baba says, giving is receiving. You know, and, and really learning how to do that is something that is an art that we're learning at the Confluence Age in, in Baba's school of arts. You know? So here we are. So thank you, Om Shanti. Beautiful, beautiful, Sister Rade. I think it was really great to hear uh, very different aspects of giving and receiving you just touched. And uh, I'm just looking at the chat box and is there any questions? But I don't see any questions. So while we are waiting... Uh, the the family to share their questions or comments, whatever. I just would like to uh, say something about the offering. You really put a different, you know, context. <coughs> Sorry. So when we offer, uh, how it makes us feel is so important, uh, you just mentioned, because we are receiving from Baba and we are offering to everyone. Sorry, I just need to... <coughs> Excuse me for that. <coughs> So uh, I, I really love this point very much. Then from today onwards, I always, you know, look at my intention. Is it really offering or giving? And I really feel the big difference between these two. Would you like to say something more about it? Because I think it's really an interesting thing. Yes. Um, 
yeah, I mean the the thing as I was mentioning the the reason why it came to my mind is is really because I remember many years ago um, someone was telling me, yeah, you know, you did very well with this and. And I remember feeling inside just sort of like, oh, you know, you can't, if you tell me my strengths, then something will happen, you know. <laughs> um, and so it just stimulated this um, wish to learn how to receive. And I was also thinking that, of course, when we sit in yoga, you know, when we are in yoga, not necessarily sitting, we are receiving from Baba, or we need to be able to receive from Baba. And it's not always that easy as well, because we might think, well, I'm not worthy, I can't go in front of Baba. Um, all these things that can come in between us and Baba. And Baba is there offering, offering so much. And so am I able to go in front of Baba in whatever condition I am? Doesn't matter what condition. It might be really on the ground. Um, can I go in front of Baba and receive his drishti, you know, receive his vision falling on me? I remember when I was in uh, Oxford, just in August, I had the fortune of being able to go there um, and I went into Baba's room and uh, the the picture that's there in Baba's room is like somehow you can just see the forehead and then it's like all light everywhere else and I had this sense of standing on Baba's forehead and diving into the light you know so I just kept that image with me that at any moment when I wanted to focus my attention that I'm standing there about to dive into the light. You know? And Baba is there, you know, Shiv Baba is there to receive me. So it's so important to be received by God. And to have that sense that I'm not being rejected, I'm not being pushed away, but he's accepted me as his child, his teacher. He's recognized me, I've recognized him. But the sense that I don't know, like when I was diving, I didn't know where I was going, but it didn't matter because he was receiving me. And so that sense of so much love. So... It must be a great experience. Yes. I bet. <laughs> wow, it sounds wonderful. I'm sure every one of us would like to experience such a thing, to dive into the God's existence and then to just accept it by him fully yes. Yes. and then feel that you are with him, not only with him, but the whole Yes. You become complete with him. Yes. Wow, it's really great. Mm -hmm. uh, still, there is no... Oh, thank you. Yeah, here, there's one question, I think. Uh, one... Somebody from Helsinki, Om Shanti, thank you. This was responding something in my heart that I did not even know uh, was there as a question. This is why it's known this is coming from Baba when the uh, answers are just coming without even first asking. Did you get it? Yes, I think so. I think yeah. it's not a question. It's a, it's no, a it's comment. just a yes. comment. Yeah, it's not a question. It's yes. a comment. Yes, thank you. Yes. And uh, yes. I was just trying to mention that the phrase you used, I, I really liked it, polishing the diamond. <laughs> and it's a cooperation within each other. 
I have never thought in, in that way, in that sense, but I think it's a very gentle and very humble way of saying it. Uh, is it is it okay if we explore this a little bit more? Because yes. I think there is many questions about that behind. Yes, I mean, I think it's when we give each other practice of, you know, if I uh, don't like someone's idea, for example, or if someone behaves in a way that is not in my standards, um, then it's very easy to withdraw our love from that person you know, or feel that someone is doing that to us. So in that case, what do you do? And I find that it pushes me inside and that's exactly where I need to go. I need to go inside. On inside, if I had not felt, um, yes, the pain, which is probably a, a more older pain than what it is, uh, the trigger in this moment. And so it pushes me inside to explore something, to find comfort in, you know, in what I know in my relationship with Baba. And so in a certain sense, I, it, it's like rubbing off a sharp corner that I have. Um, when we, I think everything we do, when, you know, when Baba talks about, he talks about the dance of, of sanskars. We could even say the clash of sanskars, you know. <laughs> so sometimes it, it is like that, isn't it? A clash, a noise. And the thing is that, yes, we do have different sanskars. But I think if I can use even that to help me get to know more about myself, then it's even worthwhile. You know? So I'm not saying we should have clash of sanskars, but um, when it's there, when we have differences of opinions, when we are sharp with one another, when someone behaves in a way that um, I don't like or is completely contrary to what I think is spirituality, um, what do I do? Am I able to, at the same time, become, you know, sharpen my own um, aspect so that it becomes completely clear? You know, because a diamond needs to have very smooth and yet sharp sides you know if it's all opaque then it's not really a very precious diamond and so we need to we need to be sharp and I think that's where the powers are but not to hurt each other you know? so in the golden age we're all sharp diamonds but we don't hurt each other and um, but now it's at the confluence age that we become mirrors for each other Often we don't like what we see, <laughs> but that's okay because it's only like this now. It's not like this forever. And then we can do something about it. We have all the tools to do that. Yeah, it's a great opportunity. Maybe the time when we have these clashes or this discomfort or irritation uh, maybe we don't like it, we don't feel very pleasant, but afterwards we really appreciate what they have done to us because the other way, how can we learn? How can we grow? Isn't it so? Mm -hmm. So I think it's very, very precious. And you also mentioned that to accept the appreciation, the praise, you know, with our sanskars, it could be our powers, whatever our, you know, abilities or service abilities. Uh, it's not always so easy for the Brahmins to accept it 
because we all feel it's my ego. Is it my ego or what is it? But you just uh, clear, very clearly, you just mentioned that offer to Baba because this was given by Baba. It's not my ability, not my talent or my success. It's Baba's service. It's Baba's sanskars that I'm reflecting. So I, I think it's a great tool to use it. Yeah. Whatever we just get it from the others, just mm -hmm. accept it with love, uh, with humility, and then offer it to Baba. Yes, we may not need to even say anything, you know, because sometimes yeah. we can say, oh, it's Baba, you know, and, and okay, it might come out, but it's more an internal thing. Yes. I think the most important thing is, you know, how I feel it, and I know it, and I don't take it personally. Mm -hmm and not to create any arrogance about it. Hmm. I think this is so, so important for us because it's very tricky, a very, uh, ish, you know, like an age, we can easily drop the other side yes. or remain on the safe side. <laughs> yes. I think that it's it's useful, especially if some you know, appreciation comes from someone who's sincere and doesn't want anything from us. So it's a it's a clean that we use it both to, uh, I mean, of course, offering it to Baba, but we use it both to build our confidence, but also our humility and gratitude, you know, which comes by offering it to Baba. And at the same time, yes, it is like a mirror as well. And so that's why it's precious, because it does help us. And I think that's why it is useful to receive it with love and offer it to Baba. So both humility and self-respect are, are built up, are, are strengthened.